Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? It's uh, Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday when I'm filming this, Wednesday when you're watching this, and I need to keep this vlog a little, uh, I'll just say simpler. It's not my preference, just so everyone knows. It is not my preference to do all the filming for the vlog in the studio. I love to bring you along the journey of life outside the studio, but sometimes my time is a little tight like today because some things are happening, all good things. Uh, I just can't, uh, anyway, I'll update you on what's happening really, really soon. But because of that, we're gonna stick in the studio talking just about, yes, the runner's knee. It's unbelievable. I just, it's frankly, uh, I don't wanna call it a miracle, but I'm just like so grateful that um, I am now on day 10 pain-free from runner's knees. Zero on the pain scale once again, again for today's run, six miles, eight, 10 a mile, definitely the fastest pace I've gone since coming back. And there it is on your screen in kilometers. Uh, so it's just, uh, I don't know what's going on except, well, I do know what's going on. I took action, okay? And I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I took to get rid of my runner's knee. Well, I, now, but I will just say that uh, I'm not saying the runner's knee could not come back, okay? Um, it's an overuse injury, as many of you probably know, or maybe some of you have experienced in the past. I'm sorry if you have. It can be really painful. Oh man, it's, it was really bad. Now before I get into the steps as to why I think the runner's knee popped up about six weeks ago for the first time, just so everyone knows, first time in my life. I've never had runner's knee before. Uh, my theory, and it's just a theory, but my theory is that I transitioned from so much mountain running and vertical gain and when I did that, everyone, I could notice. So I, you know, I stretch every day, I foam roll every day, which means I'm looking at my legs every single day. And I could see my legs getting smaller and smaller and smaller as I transitioned from the mountain running that I love in the mountain in the summertime, especially getting up into the, into the 14ers here in Colorado. And my theory is that my quad strength really, really was reduced. And I've read, and based on research, uh, weak hips and weak quads can lead to runner's knee, okay? Now, it's just based on what I've read. You can't, you can't believe everything you read on the internet, but um, a couple different sources have led me to that conclusion that my quad strength and my hip strength in my left hip, that's where my runner's knee was in my left leg. Um, so anyway, that's my theory, is that transitioning down out of the mountains without supplementing some more leg strengthening exercises, okay? And when the runner's knee started, I wanna give a shout out to this vlog. It's called Runner's Knee Discussion Starter, okay? It was maybe, I think it was mid-December, mid to late December that I published it. And I was just open to your experience with runner's knee and your um, ideas as to how to overcome the injury. So if you haven't seen that vlog, you can check it out upper right hand corner, go down to the comments and see what everyone was sharing based on their experience with this injury, okay? So thank you for sharing your ideas because I, I read as many as I possibly could. There was hundreds of comments. Um, but anyway, it helped a lot with formulating my attack plan for how to overcome this injury. Now, I always say I'm not a doctor, not giving medical advice, I'm giving runner's advice, okay? So this is what worked for me over the course of three weeks, yeah, to get rid of the runner's knee, okay? So here we go. Number one, I had to come to grips with stopping running, all right? So that was hard, very difficult decision because I was getting ready for a marathon and you know the story there. So I had to stop running and that was not an easy decision, but I do believe looking back, it was definitely, definitely the right decision. Some runners have reported to me that they were able to run through the runner's knee uh, and they, were, they did not have to stop running because they supplemented, they reduced their volume a lot, but they could still continue to jog. I chose the option of stopping running completely because what happened was I woke up one morning after a long run and I was walking around my house and the pain was a seven or eight on the pain scale. It was really, really painful, like just walking around my house. And that's when I knew I just don't think I can push through this injury, especially leading into a marathon race, okay? So that was step one. I had to stop running and after I stopped running, it took, just so everyone knows, it took four days before I could walk around pain-free, okay? It was four days of basically limping. It hurt to get in and out of my car. 
It hurt to lay like on my stomach, on my bed, my kneecap when it was resting on the bed. It was really painful. Um, almost a little bit of a burning sensation, which I guess is kind of, um, it's, it can be not normal, but it can happen with runner's knee, a little burning sensation around the kneecap. So, oh, it was, it didn't, it was no fun. It was not fun. That is the, uh, the pain scale that I was dealing with. And step two, physical therapy. Seek out professional help. It's so important. I, sometimes, sometimes I'm a little stubborn about going to the doctors, going to the medical professionals. I think I can self-diagnose, but sure enough, I said, you know what, enough is enough. Let's stop running. Let's go to the medical professionals and seek out professional help. So I made a vlog. It was called Running Injuries and Physical Therapy. Is it a gift? So upper right hand corner, go check it out. And when I went to physical therapy, I was like, man, I was kind of, I wasn't moping, but I was like, oh, this, the Houston Marathon, like, this is my goal. I want to try to qualify for the Olympic trials. And he was working with me. Ricky is his name. He was working with me. And he's like, listen, man, we're going to do our best. At the end of the day, you got to listen to your body. And so we started the physical therapy and immediately, so he's a soccer player. That's a little tip of the day. I would, for me, I sought out a, a physical therapist who has an athletic background. So he's a soccer player, played in college, played in high school. And so he really came, he understood where I was coming from, from an athlete uh, perspective. So the amount of knowledge that I have gained from Ricky, from the physical therapy, it's like I'm going to school for physical therapy school. It's amazing. And so I started the physical therapy at about basically a pain, a pain scale of like six or seven. That even includes like stationary bike riding. Like it was so, so painful to just ride the stationary bike and to do basically any of the exercises, any of the leg movements. And oh yeah, okay. The first thing he did when I came into the office, Ricky, and I was very skeptical. He did a hip, a hip strength test, okay? Where he basically pressed on my leg in different directions that he knew how to do because he's the medical professional and he pushed and he's like, okay, your left hip is way weaker than your right hip. I didn't know that. How was I supposed to know that? Like nobody's ever tested my left hip strength. And so it was very, very apparent. Like my right leg, he was putting all of his, his weight into it. And he's a kind of a big, strong guy. And he could barely move my right, my right leg, my right hip. And, but my left leg, I could not resist his strength. Not at all, but it was very, very different than my right leg. So, of course, in my simple mind, without an anatomy or biology background or, you know, medical background, I'm like, wait a minute, the pain is in the knee, below the knee. How does the hip connect to the knee? And I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying I still fully understand this, but he walked me through, you know, as best he could and me, like, under trying to wrap my mind around, like, my, my weak left hip is what he said in, in his um, diagnosis and same with the doctor as well but his diagnosis as a physical therapist is that that is the issue the main issue as to why my runner's knee flared up is a weak left hip so it's just crazy and again so anyway that's step two going to the physical therapist and diagnosing my left hip being much much I wish I would have filmed him doing the strength testing uh, I didn't film that but um, anyway it was very very obvious and step three go to the gym and do physical therapy every single day or at your house that works too you can do all this at your house i have found the gym to be a good routine for me but i was a little shocked ricky told me to do this physical therapy work every single day i thought it'd be like maybe twice a week or every other day he's like no if you want to attack this you got to go you got to do these exercises every single day so that's what I did and it was tiring and it took a lot of time and you know I had to I had to move some things around in my daily schedule to make sure I could fit in because from start to finish it's at least 30 minutes and usually closer to 40 to 45 minutes of all of these exercises to get them done. Um, so I would go to the gym and uh, do them. You've seen me film a lot over the last uh, 30 days. No, well not 30 days, the last uh, three weeks basically of doing these hip strengthening exercises especially. Now, I will say, I've also introduced, um, so because I'm advancing quickly, um, he's also introduced kettlebells, okay? And that's one reason I switched gyms in 2020. I, I moved over to a new gym that has kettlebells, also some box jumping. And just today, 
I've introduced single leg box jumping. So this is a big deal. I, there's no way I could have done single leg box jumps. Um, even, frankly, definitely not like two weeks ago. Um, and even maybe 10 days ago. So again, the knee and the leg strength is really, really responding to this physical therapy that is coming from a medical professional. But I guess my, my go-to step three is the gym. The gym. You can do this at your house, but for me, the accountability of going to the gym, it just helps me mentally to know, okay, I have these pieces of equipment there that I can use. Okay, step four for getting rid of runner's knee. These are two exercises that I'm gonna put in a, a separate step four category because I actually did not pick them up from physical therapy. Uh, I was One of them was just my own, just introducing on my own with Ricky's permission, but I didn't pick it up from, from Ricky because of my weak quads. Again, a little bit of a self-diagnosis, but it's, it's the experience of knowing, okay, I'm not doing the vertical running up in the mountains. I'm pointing this way because that's what the direction of the mountains from the studio. Um, so not doing the vertical means I think my quads have gotten a little weaker. So I've introduced leg extensions into my gym routine. Now this was, Ricky did not tell me to do this. He gave me the thumbs up though. Once I asked him, can I be introducing this into the daily gym routine? And so I'm doing these leg extensions, just single leg extensions, lightweight, 25 to 40 pounds, nothing crazy. And again, just to work on that quad strength until I can reintroduce some hill running, some mountain running back into the regimen, okay? So leg extensions, and I think it's really actually helped quite a bit, okay? Really helped a lot. So, and then also um, the slant board. Shout out to Mark and other folks down in the comments for uh, teaching me about the slant board. So you see it on your screen right now. I bought it, it wasn't cheap. It was about 50 bucks, okay? Not cheap but I will have this thing for the rest of my life. I use it not every day, about four days a week, maybe five days a week. I'll hop on it, do three sets of 10, um, and here's the slant board. And so you see me doing these squats. The key is to keep your knees over your toes. And for some reason, that slant, um, I don't know, a lot of, okay, where did I? So a lot of YouTubers who have runners, runner's knees, uh, runner's knee, the runner's knee injury have said that this slant board has really helped them uh, overcome their injury and I would have to uh, agree with them. As soon as I started using the slant board, it was honestly like a light switch moment. Almost like two days later, the pain, I woke up one morning and I told True Love, I said, True Love, I just had a shift in the pain. Like the pain has really, really subsided quickly after using this slant board. I'm not, I'm not making this up. Now, I think it was also because I had taken the time off of running, I was doing the physical therapy, uh, but I'm telling you everyone, as it was like two days later after starting the slant board work where I woke up and I was like, whoa, something feels different. Something feels much, much better in my knees. So anyway, that's step four, uh, leg extensions and slant board. And step five, I'm gonna put it all into one, one step, one category. It's the, the normal stretching, um, massaging, and foam rolling, okay? The three things that I was doing a lot of before the runner's knee, I was, but keeping up with that. And again, I've learned a lot about stretching. I'm actually taking some very um, active steps to increase my stretching. I'm gonna talk to you about that in a, a separate vlog, but that's step five keeping up with a very, I'll just say rigorous stretching, rigorous foam rolling, and rigorous massaging. And with that foam rolling, like every day at the gym, like I am really digging in. And remember with foam rolling, slower is always better with foam rolling, okay? So those are my five steps. Um, I'm trying to think, okay, I did just think of two more. The reason I switched gyms, so I've heard someone say motion is lotion for tendons and ligaments in our joints. So the more motion we can get, the better. So that's why I go into the pool and do the laps in the pool, even though I don't love swimming. I go into the pool to get that motion. Also, uh, I switch gyms because they have a steam room and I have found that heat has really, really helped the knee. Also, um, the hot tub, so the, the new gym that I go to has a hot tub. And so the jets, what I do is I basically place my lower quad and right around the knee, not right on the knee, but right around the knee, I let the jet in the hot tub hit the knee. And I'm telling you, 
it's I feel like it just helped loosen everything up around the knee I don't know and again this is a little bit of self um, diagnosis or not self diagnosis but self um, prescribing uh, things that are action items that I did to help me feel better all right so steam room and the, the jets in the hot tub all right so once again here we go in conclusion two weeks of no running physical therapy especially for hip strength gym work with daily physical therapy uh, the home remedies of the uh, the slant board and then of course the leg extensions at the gym the foam rolling the stretching the massaging oh my gosh i know it's a lot but all of that added together plus the heat at the steam room i'm just going to add that as well that is what has gotten me to this point where I was, I was honestly a little concerned that I was gonna be out. I was so painful. I thought I was gonna be out for two months, three months, four months. I've heard some people struggle with runner's knee for six months. That's crazy. And after two and a half weeks, um, it was gone, okay? Zero on the pain scale after 10 days, okay? Oh my goodness, question of the day. What is a eureka moment that you have had with a running injury in, in other words what was one action item that you took to overcome a specific running injury any running injury like it was a it was like a light switch like you did something and literally the next day or two days later or maybe a week later it was like okay that action item really helped me okay because we all need help when it comes to running injuries thank you so much for listening to my very joyful and um, just overwhelmed with gratitude vlog about runner's knee. And I'm telling you, you can, you can overcome it as well. It's just a matter of taking those a action items. And honestly, at the end of the day, find a physical therapist that deals with runners or deals with athletes and really knows what they're talking about when it comes to why the runner's knee started in the first place. It, it appears my hip strength has got it, it, it has gotten better, but it appears it was my, my weak hip on my left side. Because now, uh, with a stronger hip, the runner's knee is, is, is gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. I love you all. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. All right, we're going to toss it back on the right to the prehab blog all about how to get uh, on top of the action items that I talked about today. So the prehab blog, that'll be on the right, and then the slant board blog that'll be on the left thanks for being here thanks for watching love you all seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow